Hi, I'm Michaela. Um, I went to St. Mary's College and finished up in 2013. Um, in high school, I studied uh, music, accounting, and economics. And when I came to the University Open Day, I actually only focused on the Commerce School and didn't actually come to any of the music um, Open Day things. But um, I think just by the end of the year, I realized actually music is really what I want to do and economics and accounting was something that I just thought would get a job, would get like I would be able to have a steady job, I guess. Um, but I just really loved composition and I picked it up in 2012 um, at St. Mary's College and just fell in love with it. Hi, <laughs> my name's Danny and I studied a lot of science in high school. I did biology and chemistry. Um, I also did art as well as um, English and scholarship English and of course music. Um, and I absolutely love music. I always have, I've always been a songwriter, but just like Michaela, um, I came to Open Day and I went to all the global studies courses and I went to the science faculty courses and I just couldn't decide what I wanted to do. But then I realized that the only reason why I was thinking about these other options was because that I wanted a plan B for if my music didn't turn out. But if I wanted to really succeed in music, I didn't need a plan B. I couldn't rely on a plan B, so I decided to just jump into it and do what I loved. How about you, Matt? Oh yeah, g'day. Uh, my name is Matthew Kiriyama. I went to Rosemary College on the shore, and uh, back then I studied, now let's think, English, I studied physics, um, calculus, I studied music and drama, and um, again, like similar stories, I, I came to university with the intention of doing engineering, because I wanted to be an acoustic engineer for theatres, and I knew that I wanted to work around theatres, or I was going to do law because I wanted to be a talent agent. And I was just dancing around this idea of actually jumping in the deep end. And I was fortunate enough to get lessons um, with Dr. Teori Rakana before I came to music, and it just stuck in my head. I've just graduated um, as, a, as a classical performance and a Bachelor of Music, yes. Um, so basically, in, in short, uh, our degree is pretty streamlined as a classical light like, singer um, and you do a lot of hours of practice and it's all pretty like routine so like once you jump in it's it's kind of a sink or swim and I was really fortunate enough to like get that backstroke pretty good so I was swimming for a while and um, just three years just flew by and so I you know didn't get my fill so I've jumped straight back into honours um, and it's really yeah it's, it's really exciting I opera is one of these things that um, requires a lot of like brain work it's very physical um, it, it dances on a lot of different like levels and a lot of different mediums and fields and stuff so it's always a challenge but it's again one of those challenges it's hard to explain you just sort of when you nail it and, and you get it right it there's just so many endorphins there's so many things that just rush through you so I think I got a bit addicted to that feeling and that rush and and I just kept going so in undergrad I studied a Bachelor of Music and Arts and I specialised in composition and psychology. Um, psychology really was just another interest that I had but everything was really about music. I would take a theory course, a composition course and then there's a few electives that you can take so it could be history, it could be music production. I think um, as a composition student I could even do performance papers. Um, and so how it would look for me is usually in the beginning of the week I have theory classes um, and that also involves a musicianship component where you, um, you, all the first and second years come together as a choir um, and then I'd have my composition lectures so that's kind of big classes where we just talk about really general things um, it's also an opportunity to um, show our work in a larger class. Sometimes we'd even perform our own compositions in the class. Um, we'd also have tutorials, as you mentioned. So these are usually maybe two or three people per lecturer just sitting in the office, going through our compositions, and we get really intensive feedback, um, both from the lecturer and our peers. Um, and at the end of the week, all of the composition students come together um, to meet in the composition workshop and this has, um, we sometimes have guest speakers, um, composers from overseas 
um, but also it's a, it's a space for um, composition students to get their works performed and have them workshopped. So just a chance for everyone to kind of give feedback and contribute to um, the understanding of the student's piece. Yeah. So the life of a popular music student is quite different from these guys. Um, just to put it into brief terms, on Monday we'll have our main songwriting class, which is when we meet in the KNF Maya Center as a class, and we discuss songwriting elements and we listen to uh, new songs that have just been put into the universe, and then we just we analyze it and we look into it. Um, on Tuesdays we have our um, vocal performance or instrument classes. These will be one-on-one -on -one classes and they really, really benefit your performance altogether. On Wednesday, we could have our theory class, um, which is in first and second years, but in third year, we don't have this anymore because we basically um, learned all there is to theory. <laughs> There's a lot <laughs> to it, but it's just all we need. Um, on Thursdays, we'll have our um, we call it workshops, which is when all the popular music students of the degree, which is first, second and third year students come together and we meet at songwriting um, the rooms in Kenneth Meyer Center. And often this will be an interview with a famous person in the music industry. For instance, we've had Holly Smith come in. Um, we've had uh, many, many other famous musicians come in and we'll just have um, interviews and we'll sit in the, sit in the audience with uh, questions and we'll ask them what it is. Maybe on Friday we'll then have our production classes, which is my favorite. Um, this is also in the Kenneth Meyer Center where we sit around a room full of computers and MIDI keyboards and we'll learn about how the music is produced and what we can do to make the mix even better. So that's a typical week of a popular music student. So um, there's a lot of performance opportunities. Uh, obviously being in a performance degree, we are always performing. I've said performing three times now four. Um, there is basically, so like coming back to like the week, um, on a Monday usually for a voice class, but if you're in any you know, instrument performing um, for classical performance, um, you get to perform in front of your classmates first year, second year, third year, fourth year, um, honors, masters, doctorates. And we basically like watch you perform and it's this cool sort of workshop where you have your tutor or your lecturer um, sort of talk you through what you've done. There's immediate feedback and there's a chance to go back over and do it again. So it's a little bit daunting to begin with, but after about four years, it sort of just becomes like just the second thing, it's the norm. A lot of these performances are like geared up to be uh, a representation or like a rehearsal for bigger things. Um, so if you're a voice student, you get to perform in um, opera scenes, which is a small collective of scenes in, 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 the opera, in operas, scenes in operas, it's called opera scenes. Um, and it's an awesome opportunity to put everything you've learned into action. Um, not many uh, you know, university students get that opportunity as an opera singer. Um, there's also, we do a lot with um, the Auckland Philharmonic Orchestra. We go to St. Matthew's and perform outside of the music theatre itself, um, sometimes if we're lucky. And yeah, I mean, there's always a hot demand for musicians. And there's always the sort of ask and demand. And the opportunity to perform as a university student is actually like something that's quite rewarding. And, and it's something that you can really look forward to and prepare for. So. Uh, there's hundreds, even in theory class, if you're doing like Muse 100, um, you get to uh, basically practice in a choir, a chamber choir, and um, you'll practice as a part of your course, as a part of your paper, and at the end of that semester you'll perform. Um, but also as part of the degree, we have our final performances every semester. These are a big deal, um, and they're at the Kenneth Meyer Centre at the end of every semester. Um, it will be around this time of the semester, which is towards the end of the semester every year. And we basically go on stage and we perform two songs that we've written that semester with a full band. Um, and this is an amazing opportunity to meet people who are outside your degree. For instance, I've got a band consisting of a jazz bassist, um, a, cl not a classical pianist, um, a producer drummer, and also a composition major um, guitarist. So these people will consist of people I've just met, you know, walking on the street or going to events. And it's really cool meeting people from outside your degree to perform with at the end of the semester.
I came through university on the um, Māori Academic Scholar Excellence Scholarship. Um, I was very fortunate, I was, I was very privileged to, to go through um, with that scholarship. Um, scholarships are a cool and, and fun thing in the sense that they can help you out a lot and it's worth applying. Um, a bit like a lotto ticket, um, you need to apply to, to be in the running for them. There's hundreds of scholarships. Music has like probably the most scholarships um, with involved of like the university itself, CHI, Creative Arts and Industries, and the music department as well. Um, so it's just important to apply. I'm pretty sure if you apply for like the big ones, then you automatically are applied for other things. Um, my biggest tip for like scholarships is, you know, go through and look for as many as you can, both inside the university and outside. But also, if you can look ahead, if you're in year 12 or if you've just started year 13, have a quick look at scholarships just at the start of the year. There are always some like little things that pop up and you go, oh, you know, like, have you coached a like sports team or have you been a part of a choir or have you done these things that you might not think about? Um, and they're looking for like certain types of people. So it's nice to get those things under your belt with a little bit of like foresight into that area. So that'd be my biggest tip. And just apply, 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 apply. Some people get like quite internal and think, oh, I'll never get it, so there's no point. But you know, you never know. And you never know what scholarships are down the line. Um, any, any sort of help helps. And it's, and it's nice to be welcomed in and accepted. So to get into university, there are a couple steps you need to do beforehand. Um, some of the degrees require additional um, applications in order for you to get into university, whether that's a written statement or an audition. For me specifically, for the popular music program, I had to submit an online video of me performing my own original music. Um, so it was really easy to do this. I just did it in my own music room. My sister came in with an iPad and she just filmed me performing two songs that I've written that year. Um, it's really easy because I know some of these students in my class actually had to write their first original pieces um, for this audition in order to get into uni. So it's more about um, just showcasing that yeah, you can indeed songwrite and that you can um, develop these techniques later on after you get into university. Um, but it's all very um, easy. You just look on the university website. It's all very uh, informational. You can seek help through emails if you need. Um, there's help wherever you go, and if you need it, it will be there. Yeah, so at, at school I wasn't the best theory person there was. Um, I knew the basics, you know, like the crotchets, and I could read simple scores and stuff like that. And I, and I got through it, you know, you know we had to. Um, so when I came into university on that, like, that first paper, um, Muse 100, it was actually really refreshing. We started at the bare minimum basics. Um, what is a crotchet? What is a semi-breathe? You know, these are staves, these are the notes, um, the circle of fifths. And I mean, a large part of that course is also like the history of music. So you start with like where it came from and, and where theory comes from, the, the Gorgarian chants and the first monks that like put a note on a stave. And you do really quickly realize that it is a language and it's an international language that we can all speak. Um, and it's exponential. That course moves so quick and then out of nowhere you're suddenly like right where you need to be. Um, and then it kicks off again for, you know, for the next semester where you, where you jump in and then you're quickly learning about harmonization, um, you know, four part harmony and then it goes you know, even further to counterpoint. Um, and, and again, so I'm a, I'm a classics, classical singer and I'm stereotypical and I'm like, oh, I'll never need to know this. But until you start to get to this level where some of you're picking up orchestral scores and you need to know exactly where you are and it just becomes like second nature. You just pick up a score and just start like reading it. I would have never thought, my music teachers would laugh at me now because I would have never thought I would have got there. Um, but I did and so it's pretty cool. In undergrad composition, um, my lecturers are experts in their field. So we have um, choral experts, orchestral experts. Um, they write for the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra, for um, chamber ensembles overseas. And it's really inspiring to see the path that you can take as a composer and just to have these role models that you can look up to. And once you get to postgraduate, um, you've kind of had a chance to be taught by these different lecturers and at, in postgrad you can choose your supervisor, choose um, you know, what approach you want to take. If you want to focus on choral music then Leonie Holmes is great for that. 
um, if you want to focus on contemporary preclassical music, there's lots of options, um, lots of lecturers who are keen to be involved in that. Yeah. What about you, Danny? Um, I actually have a really good experience with my teachers and lecturers. Um, they are actually one of the sources of inspiration for me at university. Um, for instance, our main course coordinators, which is Stephen and Godfrey, they are absolutely amazing. For instance, Godfrey was my inspiration because he used to teach me one-on-one -on -one piano um, to basically look into all the weird and funky chords that I can use for songwriting. Um, and he basically inspired me to go beyond my songwriting chord progression capabilities in order to develop more as a songwriter. Um, he's also written music for people like Shifu um, and as well as Kanye West. So I think that's pretty cool to boast about. Um, yeah, our lecture is absolutely amazing. Um, our producer teacher, Jason, is also amazing. He's taught me so much about producing. I'm now so passionate about it, which is a huge step going from first year not knowing anything to basically mastering my own music now, which is like the final step of music production. How about you? Yeah, so um, with any of the performance um, majors, uh, specifically in like, any instrument, you sort of get paired up with like a mentor and it becomes very much like the, the master and the apprentice um, style where you spend a lot of time one-on-one -on -one with the person. So um, my teacher is Dr. Te Oti Dakana, um, and it's been like, it's almost daunting looking at his CV. He's performed internationally, he's been all over the place and they are performers. Um, and I say they are because there is a core group um, surrounding your um, instrument, your specialty. And although you might you know, have one teacher on every Monday for um, singers, we have a master class where they rotate through um, the other teachers like Morag, Atk Morag Atkinson, um, Katrine Johnson, Robert Widemu. Um, who are all amazing in their own right and are, again, performers. Um, there's been numerous times that they've come in jet lag from performing overseas and having to do a class with us, um, which is awesome. And they also have amazing friends that we come in. But it's, so again, so you get this really like personal experience one-on-one, -on -one, but then you also get like a lot of different, you know, uh, colours and advice from all the other like tutors and, and lecturers in that course. Um, and the only other thing I'll mention is it, it's not... Um, it's not competitive. I think there can be that sometimes um, people think I'm with this person and they're with that person. Um, but if you're like, you know, doing something and, and it needs a certain flair or a certain angle and that lecturer can give it, absolutely. You know, have a lesson with them, see what you can do, book in, you know, in the office hours. Um, and it's really cool that sort of collaborative process, both internally with us as students but, and, and the lecturers themselves. So why the University of Auckland? Um, for me, it came down to the lecturers themselves. Um, I knew them personally, they were an awesome group. And especially with like something that's so specialized like voice or like any instrument, it really does come down to that one-on-one -on -one, you know, connection between the people here um, and building that relationship, being from Auckland um, to the University of Auckland was, was a big reason why I wanted to go. Um, and I did, I, I mean, I looked at um, you know, Wellington and Otago and um, it just came down to like that personal preference and that personal flair. Um, the other big reason is that it is Auckland, um, and especially when it comes to the arts, it's sort of like a hub. Um, a lot of theatre comes through here, a lot of the music, um, big international um, you know, projects come through here. A lot of things are rehearsed in Auckland and then travel the country. So you're really close to the source and there's a lot of connections and, and um, especially for us here, like it's really easy for people to like sort of come in and, and talk to us. And we do get a lot of international people sort of just coming in just on their day off. Um, and that's, that's really exciting. So um, that's, that's mainly the reasons um, why I came here. And then again, like the reason why I stayed was because of the people. And it was awesome to have these connections, these friendships. And that, that lasted like not only here, but outside of the university. Because um, again, they were working in Auckland, they were working around um, before they jet set it off, so yeah. For me, one thing that drew me to the University of Auckland was the facilities. So we've got computer labs specifically for composition. It's got heaps of software on it. Um, there's recording equipment that you can rent out, um, recording studios, practice rooms, 
Um, and then with all of that, there's also the flexibility within the program itself. So as a composer, I did all of the music production papers in undergrad and I ended up um, running a recording project at uni, helping students record their works and it just brought composers, performers, producers together and it was just a great collaboration. So I think, yeah, it's the people, it's the people you meet um, and the connections you make and the ones that last, definitely. Just going off that, I totally agree with both of you. It is definitely the people that make the place. For instance, I'm from Wellington. Um, my family's in Wellington and I decided to come up for the University of Auckland and I stayed in halls for my first, second and third year. This is my third year and now I'm RA. Um, so for me, I believe that music is one of the most important things when it comes to opportunity. Um, you need to be in a city that thrives off energy. And I personally need that opportunity around me for, for me to thrive. So I need to th see things going on. I need to see people that can take me to a higher level. I need to have connections made in my time at university for me to build a foundation to work off when I'm finished at uni. So for me, Auckland is the biggest and most vibrant city in New Zealand. And I believe that it creates the most opportunities in order for me to develop to my best and most capable self as a singer songwriter. So um, being Auckland, being in Auckland means that I can go to all the concerts that maybe wouldn't have gone to any other city in New Zealand. I would get to meet people who are international, who may not have time to travel to other areas in New Zealand. It just means that I'm in the hot spot of the country and it means that I can basically see the opportunities as they come out essentially. Life after the university can be very, very daunting. Um, it's very scary for anybody. And especially in your first year, you just don't know where you're going. You don't know, you don't want to finish university just because you're terrified of what's going on afterwards. But in my third year, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I know various students that have come out of this degree and are now making a living with their music. Um, some artists you may know of is Foley, um, Navi, um, and more students like that who are basically in the pop industry now. I also have a classmate who's currently an intern for a big music supervisor who actually does music for a lot of Tarantino films. So that's a huge step to work towards a goal. And for me personally, I want to do an internship um, after graduating or go on to do a master's in production. So basically look into the production and recording side of things. So. There is many, many opportunities for life after university and I can name many, many names that have gone to make incredible things out of their degree. So like singing, um, when you get to a certain level and you've matured and your voice is there, you know, the, the sky is, is, is your, what's the phrase? The sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. <laughs> um, and I've had like personal friends uh, go on to perform at the Met to perform at San Francisco, Sydney Opera House, um, you name it, alumni of this university have gone through in some capacity or another. Um, and again, like it's just cool to be a, a singer. And as you guys are talking, I remember like how much we collab with composers um, for things that then go on to do, you know, international things. Um, and I was a part of like an early like composition for um, a composer who took their work all the way through England. Um, and that was just a cool thing to just be like a, a young uni student just testing out if the baritone could sing that low. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's awesome to like have those people come back and to shout you a beer at Shadows and just like chat about San Francisco and um, Wales. If you've heard of Sol three, Sole Mio, um, they're like the pinnacle of, of what we've got coming out at the moment, so yeah. My biggest tip for university students in their first year especially is to just expand your bubble as much as possible and to dabble as many passions as interests as you have. So for me, I have a lot of different hobbies and a lot of the different things that I, I, I go for um, and clubs is the best opportunity for you to do that. You can join, obviously, definitely overcommit because you're definitely going to overcommit in your first year with clubs. But that's a good thing because then you meet more people, then you get more opportunities, then you get to do things maybe once or twice and then decide you don't like it. So my probably biggest advice that I have is to try and do as much as possible that 
makes your heart happy and that makes your life interesting so that you can meet more people that you'll see in weird circumstances in the future. Like the world is small. Sometimes you walk down the street and then bump into, you know, a paintball friend. Um, and then turns out they're like this big music producer that can help you with your next single. Just dabble in as many things as you can. My advice is to just get stuck in and be open to all the opportunities that come your way. Um, I think it's really important to just have that energy um, from day one because you never know what opportunities might arise. Um, and as Danny said, clubs are so fun. Um, you know, you can be a composer, but you can still do fencing. You can be in a board games club like me. You can watch anime. <laughs> you can just do whatever you want because everything is here for you um, to broaden your experience. I think my number one tip would be um, go up and like shake the hand of your lecturer. It can be kind of daunting if you sit in these big theatres and you're way up the back and they're these like person that just show you slides. Um, but they do care. They want you to pass. They are your friends. They're incredibly nice. Um, and especially in like music, we've got this unique circumstance where we're quite a small cohort. Um, and so you do get to know these people really well. And it's just really nice to have that one-on-one -on -one connection with your lecturer. It helps you turn up. Um, you know, it, it helps you have like a friend that's, you know, the person that's, that's helping you out. So yeah, that'd be my biggest tip is, you know, shake them on, shake the hand on the way in, say goodbye to them on the way out. Um, feel free to use their office hours, email them if you have a question, um, get them on your side. Uh, because in, in university, you're surrounded by people. It's a big like moving machine sometimes, and it's nice to have a friend. So yeah, that's me and I hope to see you next year.